Hi everybody, Steve here in Memphis, Tennessee. I'm at uh, St. Jude's Hospital visiting the final resting place of Danny Thomas and Rosemary Thomas. Their final resting place is right behind me here. I'm in their uh, memorial gardens. And right behind their private mausoleum that you see here is a free museum. This is a museum dedicated to the life of Danny Thomas in the St. Jude Hospital. There's also a chapel with this very beautiful stained glass window of Danny Thomas and a memorial statue to Danny Thomas which stands right in front of St. Jude Hospital. And I'll show you all of these locations and more in just a few minutes. Thanks for joining me on another trip to visit the most memorable cemeteries, memorials, and grave sites. Driving into Memphis, Tennessee on Highway 40 coming in from Little Rock, Arkansas, the Mississippi River is a pretty impressive sight. And so is the Memphis downtown skyline. Tennessee welcomes you. Wow, look at that. I have no idea what that enormous pyramid-shaped building is, but it sure is impressive and you can't miss it from the highway, that's for sure. The pinkish buildings that you see there on the left-hand side, that's the St. Jude Hospital Complex. And here on the right-hand side is a sign for Danny Thomas Boulevard, which is one of the first streets you come to after you cross the Mississippi River into Memphis, Tennessee. St. Jude's is a private hospital, and you do have to show ID to get in through the guarded gates. But they do allow visitors to come in and visit the Danny Thomas Pavilion and Museum and the Memorial Garden. To find the Memorial Garden, you enter through the gates on Jackson Avenue. And then it's just right behind the very impressive Gold Dome Pavilion that you see once you enter through the gates. This is my first time here. Have any of you been here before? I like uh, museums that uh, make it simple to find everything. This is just looks like one big circle, starting with the history. I had no idea that da Danny Thomas was the founder of St. Jude's Hospital. I thought he was just a supporter. Starting in the 1950s, making the dream reality. God, look at all these great pictures. Nineteen seventies, nineteen eighties, nineteen nineties. And it's cool that he has his own uh, street here. And my hotel is on Poplar or is on Poplar Avenue. So it was in nineteen sixty six. Wow, the opening day here. I had no idea there was a museum here. I just knew that his final resting place was here. What a cool history. Girl, that was a great show back in the 60s. I remember growing up watching Make Room for Daddy. I think it must have been in reruns though when I watched it. It's a little bit before my time. <laughs> It's great memorabilia. All the great uh, TV shows that he created. What a life. Make Room for Daddy, 1960. Well, maybe I did watch it live. I mean, maybe it wasn't in reruns when I watched it. Wow. 1958, yeah, that was, I wouldn't have been watching it then, I don't think. Danny was some of the biggest stars in Hollywood. Wow, look at all these great photos. Beautiful architecture, too.
Look at this, uh, Danny with uh, Elvis. Without show business, there would be no St. Jude Hospital. I didn't know that Elvis was a supporter of St. Jude's Hospital, but Graceland is only 10, 15 minutes south of the hospital, so it makes sense. There's even a chapel here. And look at this great uh, stained glass window with uh, Danny Thomas. Oh, and there's the pavilion up above as well. I wonder who the artist is. He did a really great job in capturing Thomas's likeness. What a nice tribute this is. I've always really liked stained glass windows. And this is probably one of the most realistic ones I've ever seen. And as impressive as the stained glass window is, the Danny Thomas Memorial statue, which is located right in front of the hospital and directly across from the entrance to the pavilion, is just as impressive. I had to wait quite a long time for the crowds of people here taking selfies with the statue to leave, but I'm glad they were here or I might not have noticed that the statue was here. As you can see from the plaque, the sculptor of the statue is Antonio Tobias Mendez. The other plaque marker reads, Danny Thomas founder, on February 4th, 1962, St. Jude Children's Research Hospital opened its doors and founder Danny Thomas said, if I were to die today, I now know why I was born. I'll zoom in in case you want to pause the video and read the rest. It's hard to believe that was 57 years ago. Now let's head over to the Memorial Garden to see his final resting place, which is just behind the Danny Thomas Pavilion and Museum. So that's the hospital right there. And then a little bit closer here, this is the uh, museum and Danny Thomas Pavilion. And here is the uh, Danny and Rosemary Thomas Memorial Garden. The traffic noise that you hear is from Highway 40. That's the highway that I drove into Memphis on and showed you earlier. Just inside these garden gates to the left is the private mausoleum of Danny Thomas and his wife, Rosemary Thomas. And their crypts are located just behind these locked gates and doors. This is definitely one of the more unique final resting places that I've visited. So even though I'm really more familiar with Danny Thomas because of his TV show, Make Room for Daddy, when I was growing up, I mean, I watched it all the time. It's a great show. And of course, I've always been a fan of Marlo Thomas from her first uh, TV show, That Girl. And growing up as a baby boomer, you couldn't not know about St. Jude. As Danny Thomas said, St. Jude's really wouldn't exist without show business. Hollywood entertainers have really supported him and supported this hospital over the years, making all of this possible. And it's a really great cause. How many of you support St. Jude's Hospital? Or maybe you've been here yourself to St. Jude's Hospital. Feel free to share down in the comment section below. It would be great to hear your memories of Danny Thomas and the St. Jude Hospital. So who remembers the Danny Thomas Show? It was a very popular sitcom that ran from 1953 to 1964. For the first three years of the show, it was called Make Room for Daddy. I hadn't watched it since I was a kid, but I just watched it again for the first time in years on Amazon Prime. And it's still very funny, and it's held up really well. In the show, Danny Thomas plays Danny Williams, a nightclub entertainer, and a husband and father. And for the first three seasons, actress Jean Hagen played his wife, Margaret Williams. After Hagen left the show, actress Marjorie Lord took over the role as Danny's new wife, Kathy Williams. Jean Hagen died at the age of 54 from esophageal cancer on August 29, 1977 in Los Angeles. And according to findagrave.com, she's interred at the Chapel of the Pines in Los Angeles. Marjorie Lord died November 28, 2015 at the age of 97 in Beverly Hills, California. She was cremated and has no final resting place to visit at this time. Rusty Hammer, who played Danny's son, Rusty Williams, on the show, sadly took his own life at the age of 42 on January 18, 1990, into Ritter, Louisiana. Hammer was also cremated and has no final resting place to visit at this time. Sherry Jackson, who played the oldest daughter, Terry Williams, is now 77 years old. Angela Cartwright, who played the youngest daughter, Linda Williams, is now 66 years old. Danny Thomas died of heart failure at the age of 79 in Los Angeles, California 
on February 6, 1991. I recently visited the gravesite of singer Donna Summer at Harpeth Hills Memorial Park near Nashville. I also visited a few other famous graves while I was there, but somehow I missed visiting the gravesite of music legend Chad Atkins. He's buried just a few yards away from Donna Summer's gravesite, and he was at the top of my list of people to visit at the cemetery that day. But for some reason, I had a very serious senior moment and left the cemetery without visiting his gravesite. So I was very happy when I received an email from Wayne Smith with a photo that he took just the other day at the gravesite of Chet Atkins. He said that after he watched my Donna Summer video that he decided to visit her gravesite himself and while he was there he didn't have a senior moment and he remembered to visit and photograph the gravesite of Chet Atkins. Atkins was known as Mr. Guitar and the Country Gentleman and Rolling Stone magazine lists him as one of the hundred greatest guitarists of all time. So thanks, Wayne, for taking the time to visit his gravesite and, and for allowing me to share your photo with everyone on this channel. It's been a while since I've done this, but I want to give a shout out and a big thank you to my latest Patreon supporters, Rob Combs, Susan Seagrave, now that's a great last name, and George Salling. Thanks so much for your generous contributions and support of this channel. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, you might also want to check out the videos displayed here. And don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon if you'd like to be notified when I upload future videos like these.